Hello, in this video we're looking at graphing trig functions and the very last practice module in the set which is modeling with phase shift. So these problems are difficult, I, but I enjoy them. Um, like this problem right here. They say in January the average temperature T hours after midnight in India is given by this equation. What is the coldest time of day? Give an exact answer in hours after midnight. So pause the video, try it out, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, so to solve this problem, um, first of all, let's be aware of what they're asking us. They're not asking us what the highest and lowest temperatures are. That would be a nice question, and I've seen it asked, so let me just show you that real quick. If they were asking you what are the highest and lowest temperatures, all you would need to think about is um, the midline right here at 24.5. So let's say some midline right and what do I write? y equals 24.5 so this is what if they want to know how hot it got and how cold it got and then the amplitude which is 5.5 because that would tell you I'm going to ignore the period for a moment that that's not really to scale well, let me do a better job if there's some sine function like this right and so on and so forth Still not to scale perfectly, right? Because this is a height of 24, but this amplitude right here and here, the amplitude is 5.5. So the lowest temperature would be 19 because you have 24.5, the midline, minus the amplitude. It would get as cold as 19 degrees and then as hot as 24.5, I'm assuming Celsius, plus 5.5 or 30 degrees. Um, so you can use the midline and the amplitude to find the highest and low points, and you get to ignore all these things in here. But they're asking us about time, not about the actual height of the temperature. What time is the coldest day? And that is an interesting question because we can actually ignore the midline, and we can ignore the amplitude, essentially. And we can look at a simpler function. Um, so let me show you what I mean. So. First of all, let me rewrite this function as, uh, let me use black, as negative 5.5, I'm just gonna shuffle things around, times pi over 12, I did two pi divided by 24 is pi over 12, times t plus one, and I'm gonna put this value, the midline at the end, plus 24.5, it just helps me think about this problem. Okay. So um, this function we can solve on a calculator, but I, I just I want to deal with it by hand. Um, the only thing I want to show you on Desmos is that you don't need to think about, I want to convince you that you could ignore the midline and only think about the negative aspect of the amplitude. So let me just show you what I mean. Okay. So um, so I have a different function plugged in here. Okay, so I want to type in as f of x in Desmos, and I'm just going to retype that formula: negative 5.5 sine of pi over 12 times x plus one, and then plus plus 24.5. I'm going to kind of zoom home here. All right. So there's the function with our midline at 24.5. Now let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'm saying, let's plot this function here. Let's get rid of the midline. So it's the exact same function, shifted down, and let's just keep the amplitude negative. Now let's see if I can capture this idea. All right. The idea is that whatever the peak is here will be at the same time here. Even though the peaks are uh, different values, one versus 30, they have the same high peak time and the same low peak time here. Now on a calculator you could just enter this in and try to find this minimum point here of 5, but I really want to convince you that 5 can also be found um, without a calculator. So if you want to do this in a calculator all you would do is go to y equals, at the turn I have a stat plot on so I'm going to hit second y equals and Actually, no, I don't. I'm fine. I'm going to y equals. I would enter my full equation in here. I'm going to pretend this is the full equation because it takes too long to enter. And then I would just go to zoom, choice 7, 
try to see what the function looks like on a graph. Something's wrong there. Oh, what do I want to do? Maybe turn this on. Okay, now it's on. I go to graph, and there's my sine function. And you can use second graph for table. You can hit second trace and choice three. That's a minimum, and you would go to the minimum. This is, of course, not the exact function, but the idea would be the same. Enter to the left, enter to the right, and then scroll towards the minimum, hit enter again to see what the minimum value would be and when it happens. So you could do that. But I just think it's so much more fun to do by hand. So let me show you what I mean. Once you think about the fact that the amplitude can be thought of as negative one and the midline as, as just zero, you're really just graphing this function. You're just graphing a negative sine of pi over 12. And I'm writing it in terms of x now. Um, you know what, I'm not going to do that because one of my issues here when I'm doing these problems, I often forget what the variables are, so I'm going to leave it in the same terms they have it. t plus 1. Okay, and this is the function we're dealing with. How do we do this by hand? Well, if you have your y-axis and your x-axis, and um, first I always think about my parent function, my parent sine function here. The sine function looks something like this. Okay, and it takes two pi radians to complete a cycle. That's normally what happens with the sine function, but we have the negative of that. So instead of this, I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis first. Okay, and the period is different. The period is two pi divided by the value of this um, coefficient here. And that just equals 2 pi times 12 over pi. The pi's cancel, and we get 24. And now I'm happy because, I'm okay, it's a day. It makes sense that the period of the wave is 24 hours. So instead of 2 pi, just manipulating this, we are at 24 hours, which means this is at the 12-hour mark, this is the 18-hour mark, and this is the 6-hour mark. Now, you, you might say, well, the answer is 6, right? The minimum lowest temperature is 6, but don't forget your phase shift. It's to the left once, right? When you add to the input, all those values get pushed back by 1. So, for example, it just goes back here, right, by 1. And what I would do is actually, let me just um, retrace that because this maybe seems like it's hard to keep track of that. I would just draw it out like this, right? So let me do a better job. This is our final curve. I'm going to match it here. It's, it's the blue graph now. This is our blue function. And what I do to keep track of that is I just take where the previous peaks were. At 18, we had a peak. So now a peak is here at 17. And I don't know what the actual temperature is. It doesn't matter. I just know it happens at 17 hours. So here, if the previous lowest temperature is at 6, we moved it back one. The lowest temperature is now here at 5. And you can see my drawing is really off in scale. But the idea of the transformations gives us the answer. And that answer is 5, right? So we can use transformations or calculators or whatever to solve this. And the coldest time of day in this case would be 5. Let's do one more. OK, so take a moment, read this problem, and then we'll solve it together. OK. So the moon's illumination changes in a periodic way. OK, that makes sense. On the night of a full moon, the moon provides this much lux of illumination. And then during a new moon, it provides less. And the period, so they give us the period. Here, I'm going to write this down. The period is 29.53 days. OK, 29.53 days. And the moon will be full on December 25th, and that is seven days before January 1st. To find the formula um, that models the illumination of the moon t days after January 1st. Okay, to find the function using radians. All right, so this, there's a lot going on in this question. First of all, I'm going to notice we're modeling everything on January 1st. Okay, so I'm going to draw, let's scroll up here. All right. 
a y axis and my x axis. And on my x axis, I've got time. On the y axis, lux. And I know this uh, that zero represents uh, January 1st. The point they're giving us is right here, December 25th, that's seven days before January 1st. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the lux at that point is up here, negative seven, so seven days before January 1st of this year. The lux is at 0 0.25. And then we're told the period is 29.53 days later. So, okay, so this is negative, this is seven, let's say 14. 21 and so we are going from this point to about um, here let's say and that's 22.53 think about where I got that number it has the same height I know that all I did was I added 29.53 to negative 7 so I took 7 away from 29.53 and here we have one full cycle and we're, what are we also told we're also told that it has, okay, so so we're told that during a new moon, it provides zero lux of illumination. I guess we have to assume that's the lowest, right? It can't have more than no light. And because we're using a trig function to model this, that means the lowest point uh, should be essentially right in the middle of these two peaks, right? Because we're, we're studying sine and cosine waves, so those are our choices. And here, we find the midpoint between them, halfway between the two, and that's our low point. Is that necessary for this problem? Um, I think it would be helpful to have it. I don't think it's necessary, though. So I'm going to say 22, let's find that midpoint, 22.53 plus negative 7, and then we're going to divide that by 2. That's going to get us our midpoint, which is where there's a new moon, halfway between the, the full moons, of course. And I believe that's 7.765. Let me check that. So quit out of here. All right. 22.53 minus 7 divided by 2. 7.765. Okay, 7.765. And that gets us a point about here at zero. So this point is 7.765 and zero. Now when I look at this, I think cosine wave because it peaks, comes down, but you could write it as a sine wave, I suppose. I have to go look at the problem again. Um, they don't specify. I just, I'm drawn to the cosine wave here. And we have a lot of information at this point. What else do we need? Oh, we need the midline. So that's halfway between 0.25 and 0, halfway between 1 fourth and 0. Um, so you could do 0 0.25 plus 0 divided by 2, or just divide 0 0.25 divided by 2, uh, divided 0.25 by 2. Either way, you get the midline at 1 eighth, and the amplitude, the distance between, right, because of the halfway point at around 0, the amplitude is also 1 eighth. And that tells me that our function should start off with the 1 8th. Remember the template. Uh, if we're using cosine a, is the tells us the amplitude. So the absolute value of a is the amplitude times the cosine of b will help us find the period because b divided by 2, p, uh, 2 pi divided by the period is b. So I should say that in this case, the period will help us find b because we have the period. Um, and I'm going to put parentheses times x. Um, plus our phase shift and then plus our midline D. So we're looking for these things. We can assume at this point the way the cosine curve is oriented it's not reflected. It's just like its parent function. right? It's not something like like this. right? So it's not reflected over the midline or, or something. So we're going to keep this as positive. And then we're going to use, I, I chose cosine. The b value, so b is uh, equal to 2 pi over the period. And the period is 29.53. I think they said in the problem earlier, 29.53. So it's just going to be 2 pi over 29.53. OK. And they want 
the variable t and then look at this it's been shifted over by seven back seven so the way horizontal translations work if you're going back seven on the x-axis you add seven close parentheses and then we add our midline in of one eighth and I would actually take time enter this on Desmos but use X and see if you're getting the right inputs and outputs so let me show you what that looks like and then we're done okay oh go to this all right so if you're trying to check this one on Desmos what I would probably do is just type this in I would type in 1 8 times the cosine of 2 pi over 29.53 that's six three five five three parentheses x plus seven plus one eighth. Now this is hard to see. I can hit shift and zoom by dragging. I can go press the gear and type in the pi symbol for my steps. But I'm just gonna type in f of zero. Excuse me, f of negative seven. Because I should get 0.25 and I do. And f of twenty-two point five three. To go back up to 0.25. Those are these points here and here. That's one full cycle of our cosine wave, so it checks out. So these word problems are typically like so something you're seeing in these two examples here. If you need more support, please let me know.